Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're going to be discussing a Bulldog Revolver made in Belgium by Antoine Bertrand. But before we get to that, I'd like to particularly thank my supporters on Patreon. All of this costs money and I haven't got a lot of that. So you are more helpful than you know. I'd also like to thank the friends of the channel who have been generous with donations of ammo and in providing me with guns to show you and talk about. So all the help is very, very much appreciated and I thank you all. So on to the revolver. Now, bulldog style revolvers were made in all calibers from very small to very large, um, if you count. 45 caliber is very large. And um, the 22 and some of the 32s tended to be referred to by the gun makers in Liege as puppies because they're really small bulldogs. Very cute. Um, this is not a puppy. This is in caliber 38 center fire and it has many of the features common to its ilk. Now, it is a very small revolver, and the details, consequently, are also small, so let's go to the tabletop and have a look. This particular revolver is very small. Um, in its, it is six inches long, and if you go to the extreme of including the front sight and the uh, lanyard loop post, it's only four and a quarter inches tall. It is actually comparable in size to Top Break 32 caliber revolvers of its era. And that's very small indeed. And as you can see, this would be very handy to drop into a pocket or a, a you know, a, an overcoat pocket or some such. It is a 38 caliber five shooter and is notably smaller than more modern. 38 special five shot revolvers. Now the caliber is 38. It is actually 38 center fire, which is now often called 30. And this is an externally lubed 125 grain bullet from Buffalo Bullets that's actually designed for cap and ball revolvers, but I have found works well in 38 center fire. Now the bullet diameter is actually 0.375 not 0.357 as modern 38s are, or 0.360 as 38 Smith & Wesson was. And it's externally lubed because the base is smaller than the bullet diameter, and being inside the case, putting the lube there wouldn't help with engaging the rifling or anything. Um, to load these, basically you fill them with black powder and stuff the bullet in on top, and I have a variety of tools to accomplish that. And um, it is comparable in power to 38 Smith & Wesson. Now, revolvers of the Bulldog type do not have swing out cylinders. Instead, you open a loading gate and with the gun in the safety knot position, you slide this out from under the barrel, rotate it to the side and use it to get the cartridges started so you can pull them out manually. So reloading is glacially slow, but people did not anticipate much need to reload with a pistol of this type because criminals don't like being shot. <laughs> and, um, and of course, they're so small, light and inexpensive that you could carry two pretty easily. The famous New York reload. Now, the trigger is the folding type and it stays in place until you deliberately fold it down, and this is a matter of friction rather than a spring or anything. The trigger pull is, in double action, is commendably short and really quite light at about seven and a half pounds. Now, as you can see, the trigger return spring, which is located up here, um, is not functioning. It seems to be broken. And uh, at some point, I'll probably replace that, but frankly, I don't shoot this enough that it's been a priority. The gun can be cocked to single action, but why would you? And along with many European revolvers, it has a safety. In this case, a cross bolt safety that locks the hammer from double action fire only. If the gun is cocked, you cannot engage this. And it is situated and operates in a way that is arguably suboptimal. 
because you have to push it from the right to the left. And if you're right-handed, that's not something you can conveniently do while deploying the pistol. So I imagine it was mostly carried without the safety engaged. Um, as you can see, the hammer is slightly to the rear. So if we fire the gun, the hammer goes all the way forward, the firing pin protrudes, sets off the cartridge, but when the trigger is released and returns, it cams the hammer backwards slightly so that the firing pin is positively blocked from striking the primer of a cartridge. Uh, the sights are essentially a front sight because this rear groove is not particularly useful and doesn't particularly point the gun in the vertical axis to the point of aim. So basically this is meant to be used at an arm's length to point and shoot and the sight is only really there because you might as well. Now, <clears throat> this is quite a well-made little gun, and the original grips are in good condition. Originally, it would have had a loop affixed here for a lanyard, which frankly seems to me a rather dubious feature on a revolver this small. But, you know, European's gonna European. And uh, the front sight is big and half round and well, you know, quite visible if you had a usable, useful rear sight. Unlike a lot of guns of its type, this one is not labeled British Bulldog, and it is not labeled as to the maker. There is a maker's mark on it that I was able to research and find out that the maker was Antoine Bertrand, um, who operated in Liege from 1886 to 1900 under his own auspices and very likely worked for himself or for other gun makers both before and after that period. So it's quite a well-made handy little thing and if you've got a smaller hand than mine it's quite easy to grip and pretty easy to fire. Um, it was you know at three yards it was the accuracy is quite reasonable but having to reset the trigger manually between shots because of the broken part, you know, you really can't make a lot of judgment over how useful it would be in sort of point blank panic fire because you can't. Um, anyway, it's a neat little revolver, neat little piece of history and quite good quality. Antoine Bertrand was not in operation under his own auspices for a particularly long time and there could be any of a variety of reasons for that. Um, according to the sources I've been able to find, he did not enjoy, we'll call it a sterling reputation. Not because of the quality of his weapons, but see, these are proof stamps. And they're done by the official Belgian proof house, and they are to certify that the gun may be safely fired and all guns sold are supposed to have these proof stamps. Um, there were allegations that Antoine Bertrand was forging proof marks for export guns, uh, which may or may not have been of dubious quality. And of course, uh, Liege, Belgium had hundreds, if not thousands of small gun making shops and they produced weapons there's some very, very fine weapons and some very, very trash weapons. Um, this one is pretty good and uh, I quite like it and someday I'll get around to fixing that pesky spring, but it's really a pain in the butt to work on this. Um, so as it is, a neat piece of history, good conversation piece. And what else does it need to be? Anyway, if you like the video, please take five seconds out of your busy life to hit the like button because it really helps the channel. And uh, if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications bell, and uh, you'll make, it'll make sure you see it. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.